Good morning, good morning. How are everybody this morning? Wonderful. Wonderful. Was that good or what? Huh? That was pretty awesome, wasn't it? I wish I could act. You all don't wish I could act. You all probably get it. I don't try to act. Hey, f- Amen. I'm with you, brother. Man, we get, this is going to be a great day. Friday being Christmas, y'all probably figure coming to the church, you're going to hear some preacher talk to you about Christmas, right? This being cowboy church, there's a good possibility you'll be able to hear something a little different. I told you earlier something's going to happen today that uh, I just don't think I've ever seen happen in any church I've ever been in. Today, we're going to dedicate four babies to God. Mom and Dad have decided to make a commitment before you, me, and the Lord to raise their children in a godly home with godly instruction. So we're going to do that. What's going to happen after the baby dedication is one of those sets of parents, a mom and a dad, is going to walk over and dedicate and be baptized today. So as their children, they're making this commitment unto God to raise their child as a Christian. They're going to make a public profession of faith in an act of obedience and following believers' baptism. Folks, I just don't think that's ever happened before in any church I've ever been in on the same day. And I couldn't think of any great way to honor Christmas than to have something like this going on. Because this is what Jesus came for. This is what it's all about. If a church can't be doing this, you're waking the baby. Usually I get blamed for that. Me or the dog. So I thought we'd talk today a little bit about baptism. What baptism is, you know. For me as a preacher, what's going to happen today is like a baseball slugger hitting a grand slam. I mean, there, there's things that, that, that just are really, really important to a pastor. One is to see someone come to that saving grace of Jesus Christ. The second thing is when they decide to follow in believers' baptism. And then the third thing is when a mom and dad says, you know what, I want to stand before God in the congregation and dedicate my children unto God and commit myself to raising godly children. I mean, if that ain't a trifecta, I don't know what is. I mean, it's just, that's just hitting one out of the park. If you've been around Cowboy Church very long, then you understand that we associate baptism with Brandon. How many of y'all know what Brandon is? Y'all have heard about being Brandon, Brandon on horses, and Brandon on cattle? Brandon started a long time ago, back in the days when they had what they called free range or open range. There wasn't any fences. Matter of fact, when Bob wire fencing come along, there was big wars and, and, and range wars fought over fencing off the land. Because people shared that land, they shared that grass. The only problem was, if you turned out 500 head, and I turned out 500 head, and John turned out 500 head, and Larry turned out 500 head, and they're out there for six, eight, nine months, and they all have calves and stuff and start to grow, and little ones become big ones and all, whose is whose? So now we go out and we do a big gather, and we come in and we bring in 1,500 head. Well, naturally, mine are the best ones, right? Yours are starved to death, John. I don't know where they've been grazing. (laughs) So to avoid all that, they said, we need to be able to mark our cows. We need to be able to put our brand on these cows to show ownership. These are mine. Everybody says, well, you don't brand the babies. How do the babies get branded? They don't get branded until you round them up. Well, if you've ever paired up mama cows and calves, it's really easy to do. You just get all the mama cows in one pen. You get all the calves in another and go have lunch. And when you get back around 2 o'clock, you'll hear this god-awful bellering. And everybody's lined at the fence, cows on one side and calves on the other, and they're just bellering back to forth. So what you do is you go let one cow in the pen with the calves. It'll take her all of about 60 seconds to find her baby. She will sniff them out, find them out, and go to licking on him and pushing the others away. We call that mammying up. Buddy, when they man me up, you grab that one, and you brand that one, and you tag that one, however you're going to mark that one. And you know now that that one carries your brand. Cattle ranchers kind of got away from branding a lot nowadays because a lot of buying and selling of cattle happens just for that reason. I'm buying to sell. It ain't staying here long. Don't need my brand. But if a, a rancher buys replacement heifers, before they're ever turned out with the herd, they're branded. 
He puts that brand on them because he's going to keep them. He bought them. He paid for them. And I'm keeping them. And they're mine. And I want everybody to know they're mine. That's what baptism is, folks. I couldn't describe baptism any better. Is when one someone stands before God and makes that public profession, There's, they put on the brand of the cross, and they tell the whole world who they belong to. I belong to Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God's, and I made my public profession before man standing up as I followed in believers' baptism. And there's other things that go along with baptism. The reason that we are called to brand. And I'm going to go through them. If you brought your Bibles with you today, we're going to go through this. We're going to be in Romans chapter 6. We're going to start off in verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 6. And we're going to go through some of the points of why we do this whole deal. You know, a lot of times people do stuff and they just don't know why they do it. You ever ask someone, say, why do you do that? I don't know. That's just the way we've always done it. Ever think about doing it this way? Oh, no. <laughs> we've always done it like this. You ever been a part of that? I've been a part of churches like that before. You, know, you try to change something, boy, I tell you what, they run you off. <laughs> Bloody no, sir. We've always had red chairs. We're going to have red chairs. And if you don't like red chairs, this church is just not for you. <laughs> you need to move. <laughs> but what we do is we want to find out why we do what we do. Because the Bible says that we should be able to give account for. Someone asked you, well, how come you guys over at the cowboy church always dunking people in that water trough? They smell. That's why. No, that ain't why. But you need to be able to tell people why. Why do we do this? What's the purpose of it? So if we read in Romans chapter four or chapter six, verses one, it says, What shall we say then? So shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. <clears throat> How shall we <clears throat> certainly not? How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know? That as many of us who were baptized unto Jesus uh, Christ Jesus were baptized unto his death. Therefore, we were buried with him in baptism into death. That Jesus, just as Christ was risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in a newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that the old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. So why do we do this? First thing I want to get into is baptism and salvation are two different horses. All right? Two different things. A lot of people tie them together and all. My Bible doesn't say that anywhere in there that they're tied together. It mentions them in a couple of verses at the same time, but it doesn't say that they go together. It doesn't say that you need one without the other. If you'll read Romans 10, flip over to Romans 10 real quick. Romans 10, verse 9, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon his name. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's very simple. You have to believe it in your heart and you have to confess it out with your mouth. You have to be able to stand up and say, this is what I believe. This is what these people are going to do today at baptism. They're going to make that public profession. You know, a lot of times people walk in the aisle. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with walking in the aisle. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what anybody else does. But I don't think you can get more public in what you're going to do than when you're going to stand up in an ice cold water trough and be baptized. I just don't think there's any more public than that. Nobody out here is going to leave today confused about what just happened. Nobody's going to wonder what was whispered in my ear standing down here. We're all going to know. We're going to ask them point blank. Do you accept God as your Father? Jesus Christ as your Savior and the Holy Spirit as your God? They're going to say yes, and yes, and yes. And you're all going to get to hear it. Salvation is made once you believe. Baptism, as we're going to find out, 
is a few other things. We keep them separate. You know, in John 14, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes on the Father but through me. He didn't say, through me in baptism. See, here's the deal. You can't tie salvation to any act that we do. It was all done on the cross by Jesus Christ. It was all paid for right then and there by him. He paid it all. We sang that song. He paid it all. All to him I owe. He didn't pay 95% of it and you got to do the last 5%. He paid it all. When he stood on the cross, he said, it is finished. It is done. It is over. It's sealed. It's signed. It's complete. Done. He didn't say it's done all but. He said it's done. So why do we do this thing? Well, Jesus told us to. The Great Commission tells us. Go into all nations, making disciples, preaching the gospel, leading people unto Christ. And once they find Christ, baptize them. Jesus thought it was so important to be baptized, he went and got baptized himself before he ever started his ministry. He went down to the river and had John the Baptist baptize him. He says, I got to do this in obedience to my Father before I can ever do anything else. This is how I'm going to start my ministry. Being obedient to God. Obedient to my dad. It's the biggest point of baptism is being obedient. We were asked to be baptized. Jesus says, baptize them. Go baptize them. Be baptized. All through the New Testament, it tells us to be baptized. It is a command, not a request. Y'all understand the difference? It is a command. Jesus said, make disciples of them, and if they want to, baptize them. Not what he said. He said, baptize them. Get them wet. Get them all the way under. Get them down. Guy asked me one time, he says, do you have anything against sprinkling? I said, no, sir. If you can get them all the way down in that cup, I ain't got nothing against it. And also, when we get baptized, it says who the rancher is. Do you know when they have brands, there's not a whole lot of Double J brands out there? Wouldn't make a whole lot of sense if I branded mine Double J and you branded, John branded his Double J and, you know, some other guy branded his Double J because then we're definitely going to be in a fist fight because they all going to be Double J's. So there's Raptor J, Bar J, Crooked J, Lazy J, Sleepy J. They're all different because that shows a specific owner, a specific person owns those cattle and when people were riding range and they seen that brand they instantly knew those are jj's cattle how do you know that look at the brand look at the brand on there see there's only two ranch bosses in this world whether people want to believe that or not the bible says it's either of god or it's of the devil there's only two outfits to ride for there ain't multiple choices even though the world is trying to teach that today, that there's many ways to get to God, because there's not. We just read what the Bible says. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Me. So, when we get baptized, we put that cross on there. We're making it specific to God. We're saying we are a child of the Most High. I'm a brother of Jesus Christ himself. I'm a sister in the family of God. You know that outfit. Because I got the bumper sticker on my car with the little fish. And I wear a cross around my neck. Let me tell you something about Brandon. Brandon does not make that cow belong to the rancher. Brandon comes after he bought and paid for it. You follow me? Just because he slapped a brand on it, there's a lot of cattle rustlers that rebranded cattle and covered up a brand. A brand doesn't prove ownership. See, a brand is what you put on after it's bought and paid for. That's just like baptism. We do it after we're bought and paid for. See, because I could brand John's cattle, couldn't I? How about this? I buy a steer and don't brand it. Is it still mine? Still mine, ain't it? I bought and paid for it. 
Only problem is nobody knows whose it is. So I can mingle around in the herd and do whatever I want, and I can't never get blamed for nothing, huh? I can just kind of act the way I want to act and go in there. Well, whose cow is that one that keeps tearing down the fence? I don't know. It must be yours. No, it must be yours. Ain't got no brand on it. But it belonged to somebody. It didn't just magically show up there. Somebody bought it. See, that's what I'm saying. There's two ranch bosses, and we're going to ride for one or the other, one or the other, one or the other. People says, I ain't choosing. You chose. Just because you don't choose doesn't mean that you, th there's no third. There's no none of the above. I seen a cool thing on Facebook the other day. It said, Atheism, atheism is a temporary condition. I thought, hmm. And believe it, it said, because one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So atheism is a temporary condition. There will be a day when these people will know. See, so when we're going to get branded, we're going to take that brand. Not only does it actually tell us who our rancher is, it tells us the outfit that we ride for, and we make it public. That's like wearing your cross on the outside of your shirt, not the inside of your shirt. I don't know if you've ever done that before, walked in a situation where you thought maybe being a Christian, labeled as a Christian, might be offensive or get you some unwanted attention. So you take that cross from the outside of the shirt, unbutton your shirt, put it on the inside, close it up. I tell you what, when they burn a brand on a horse, you can't cover it up. When they burn a brand on a steer, it's there. It's burnt all the way down deep into the high. When we get baptized, it's burnt all the way down into our soul. It's forever deal. It doesn't wash off. You can't lose it. Isn't that cool? You can't lose it because, I, man, when it comes to losing stuff anymore, y'all have been with me a couple of Fridays. I was losing everything, wasn't I, baby? Lost the ramps off the trailer, went around to get the ramps, lost the syrup tubs off the back of the trailer. Yeah, one of them days. This is to me forever. It's last. I can't lose it. I'm marked and I'm branded for life. That's what baptism is. It says I'm committed for eternity. I have committed myself to eternity. Baptism is a symbolic symbol. As we just read in the scriptures that shows that our old self died away. And there's a new us. The Bible says, God, forget your past as far as the east from the west. East from the west. Never to be brought up again. When we get baptized, it's drawing on the promise of God that we are there or his forever. It's a symbol of showing that our old self has passed away. Buried in baptism. Didn't the scripture say that we died with Christ when we accepted Christ in salvation? That we joined in it? That the old man was crucified on the cross? Galatians 2.20 says, For I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the one that gave himself for me. Baptism is just putting a brand on that, just putting a stamp on that. Remember back in the day, they had the little wax rings and stuff and all? That's how they knew that letter was from that guy. They would seal a letter and put it over top of the seal, and that signet ring would seal it, and they knew that when they got that letter that nobody had ever been in it, and they knew exactly who it come from, were sealed in baptism. The greatest thing that comes along with it is the promises of God. How many of y'all know what hobbles are? You ever seen a horse that's been hobbled? They tie their front legs. When I first moved to West Texas, coming from Florida, we never hobbled horses. And all the horses out there were riding around with this big three-inch leather band around their neck. And I'm like, they got dog collars for their horses. That's the dumbest thing i ever seen. What, they got leashes? They tie them up to at the hitching post or something? Those were hobbles. And what they do is they loop them around the front feet. Now, the horse can still move around. They can still graze and eat, and if they get off and they're going to be doctoring for a while or fixing fence, they'll take them hobbles and they'll put on that horse. Because if you've ever been out in West Texas, you lose your horse, it's a long stinking walk back to town. I'm talking days. So they'd hobble them horses. Now, that's a really good ranch horse. 
He's the one that they just used to rope and to ride and to brand. And he's just as solid and as sound as can be. And he's a great horse. Not when he's hobbled. He's just a horse. He can't use any of his attributes. He can't use any of his strength. He can't excel in any of the great gifts that he's been given. Let me put it this way. How many of y'all remember the story of the Israelite people when Moses went and delivered them from Egypt? We've all heard that story a bunch, right? Let my people go. The Bible said that the night the death angel come, if they would kill a lamb, place the blood on the doorpost, that the death angel would pass them by. They were set free, weren't they? They were delivered. Pharaoh turned them loose. And they were turned loose in the desert, and they had all the provisions of God. He cared for them, didn't he? They had everything they needed. Food fell from the sky. Water came from a rock. They were led in the day by a pillar of smoke and by a pillar of fire at night. God gave them every provision they needed. But they hadn't received the promises of God, had they? The promises was the was the going into the, the promised land and, 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 and multiplying and receiving all the great things. Remember when Joshua and them come back with that big old thing of grapes, they had two guys had to carry it. They told him, so you can't believe this place. That was all the promises of God. And it was over there. God had provided for them. He had been set, they'd been set free. They were delivered. The death angel would pass them by. Just the same with us when we accept Christ. When we put the blood of Christ on our heart, the death angel passes us by. And at that moment, we're set free. We are no longer held bondage to sin. We are let loose. We are free. Free at last. For the truth will set you free. And God provides for us each and every day. and gives us the provisions for us and cares for us and takes of us each and every day. But it, just like the people in Egypt, see, they had to go through the water. To get the promises of God. They had to go down through the water. To get what God had promised on the other side. And I'm going to tell you. Being baptized is like taking the hobbles off. When you go through the water. The promises of God are opened up to you. Those things are laid forward out before you. I had a guy tell me one time after he was baptized. Two Sundays later he come running into church. He goes I finally get it. I said ain't catching is it? I said what'd you get? He said, you know, rainbows are God's promise to the people. I said, absolutely. He goes, I've read that a thousand times and never realized that. God opens our eyes. We see the scripture more clearly. The hobbles are taken off. We're set free to have the abilities and enjoy the promises that God has full of in that book for us. Once we go through the water. But here's the thing. If you tell your kids to clean the room. And if you clean that room, I'm going to take you to McDonald's. That used to be a big deal when I was a kid. Probably isn't anymore. They called, it was Burger Chef back then, but it wasn't a McDonald's. But. Do you take them before they clean their room? Why not? You promised it to them. You're going to do it, right? Same way with God. He's given you the promise. But he wants the act of obedience. He wants you to be willing to stand up and make that public profession, to stand before men, to stand before women, to stand before the world and say, you know what? I carry the brand of the cross of Jesus Christ on my heart. And I want the world to know it. I want to shout it from the rooftops that I'm a child of God. And God sits down. He looked down just like he said, well, he's my son in whom I am well pleased. And I'm going to tell you what, he's going to say that twice here today. My son and my daughter, and whom I'm well pleased. Are you happiest when your children are obedient or disobedient? Or just quiet? That's kind of a toss up, isn't it? You know, eh, they're in the middle of the road just being quiet. You know, I can, I can live with that. I can take that. Yeah. <laughs> the guy told me the other day, who, who was it told me? He said, you know, when the grandkids come, he says, I, I, I think it was Wayne. He said, boy, I love to see them headlights coming down the, the driveway, but ain't nothing prettier than the taillights. <laughs> and after three days, them taillights look better than them headlights, don't they? Amen. 
Folks, baptism is an act of obedience. For so many reasons, we do it. The main thing is God asks you to. Whenever someone comes to me and says, hey, I want to be baptized, I always meet with them and talk with them because there's one answer that I'll accept and no other because I'll always ask them, why do you want to be baptized? Well, you know, my wife says it's time for me to get baptized. <clears throat> Bobby and Sally and Jenny got baptized. I figure I need to get baptized too. <clears throat> Little, Gra little Grayson told me this. And I had a pair of seven-year-old twins tell it to me one time. I said, Preacher, what do you mean why I want to get baptized? I want to get baptized because God tells me to. And I want to make God happy. The Bible says, out of the mouth of babes that a small child shall lead them. There's no other reason to get baptized other than God's laying it on your heart. That's something that you need to do for God. Because baptism's got nothing to do with Happy Charles Cowboy Church. It's got nothing to do. <laughs> I ask people all the time, they're going to be baptized. I say, well, do you want to be a member of the church? Well, doesn't that automatically make me one? Not unless you want to be. All that makes you is right with God. It's got nothing to do with Happy Trails. It's got nothing to do with me as a pastor. I don't get any extra marks on my belt when I get up there before God. Well, you baptized. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Carry the two. Okay, you get this. The act of baptism is between you and God alone. Nobody else. Dear Lord, we just love you. We thank and we praise you. Lord, through this baby that's going to be born, all this came about. And Father, no greater act of obedience can we give unto you than be baptized. And Father, as we realize now that we're branding ourselves as a Christian, we're standing high and tall, shouting from the mountaintop that, yes, I am a child of the Most High, that I belong to you. Father, I don't know the hearts and the conditions of those here. I don't know if there's someone here today that was, was baptized before they were saved, uh, as baptized as a child and, and just has fell away and feel this need, been having this agony need to just get right, something that you've been laying on their heart. But all I ask is if there's anyone out there today, Father, that has felt this need, felt this nagging, felt this question, that they will come to the point where they'll say, I need to get this done. Not for any other reason, but other than to be obedient unto you. And Father, if there was one that was here today that was hearing about salvation and how easy it is, it's just a free gift, as, as it said there in Romans uh, chapter 10, is all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. By no other name can a man be saved, but whosoever calls. Lord, it doesn't matter what they've done, where they've been, you're willing to receive them. And Father, if they want to receive that now, if they want to take the first step in turning their lives over to you, I pray they would pray this prayer. That they would say, Lord, I realize now that I've been riding for the wrong trail balls. Today, I want to change outfits. Today, I ask you to come in and be the Lord and master of my life. I believe that Jesus was you in the flesh. I believe that he walked this earth to be my guide and that he died on a cross to pay my debt. I believe that he rose from the dead on the third day. That he defeated death not for himself, but for me, that I may never die. So I may spend eternity on with you. Father, I call on you now to come in and be the Lord and Master of my life. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the parents and the babies to come forward. I'm going to ask the elders to come forward. No, up here. Up here. Come on here, guys. Front and center. We'll put the elders on one side of you. Any side. Just y'all up here in the middle. Got, so over here, you can come over here with these guys. These guys bite. They've all had their shots, though. I don't know. Daryl's might be outdated. 
You got a tag or something? <laughs> Folks, it's the beginning or the middle of a of a great service today. And, uh, and this world the way it is today, to see a, a group of young people feel the need to commit their children unto God and to commit their lives unto raising godly children. It's just, uh, I don't know, as I used to say, it just gives me that warm fuzzy. I don't know about you. I got God bumps running up and down my arms. He does too. Hey, how are you? You remember me? No? Don't be teaching the kids. Godly, you're to help them raise godly children. Okay, okay. you understand the elder who to keep them away from, right? The big guy right there with the green hair. I want you all to listen to what the counsel of, of given by God in regards to our children is. He says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your hearts. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall t <clears throat> talk of them when they sit in the house. When they walk by the way, when they lie down, and when they rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your, <clears throat> on your hand. And they shall be the forelets between your, uh, between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and your gate. Today, these parents of Brooklyn and Kaler and Caden and Emily, Justin and Connie. Everybody spells her name so different nowadays. <laughs> and Anthony and Erica. They've come to acknowledge the words of our Lord. They come to acknowledge the words that we just read out of Deut Deuteronomy chapter 6. They've come knowing and admitting before us of their dependence on God to raise their children. Our purpose today is to help you as parents to appreciate your obligation. And to covenant with you before God as your church family. To help train your children in the nature and the counsel of our Lord. So that when they come of age, the age of responsibility, that they will naturally turn to God and turn away from the world. That they will turn their hearts to Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. God has a purpose. For Brooke and Kaler, for Caden and Emily. He has a purpose for their lives. To find that purpose and to live it out fully will mean nothing but success. To refuse it or to ignore it means nothing less than failure. No matter how much worldly acclaim they get or how much possessions they acquire, it will still mean failure. It is our privilege and duty to stand with you, to help guide you and your children in such a way as to make the will of God their greatest goal in their lives. But the responsibility of this does not lie on the parents alone. We share in that as a church family. But it falls on all of us. So if you're a member of the family of God, and you're willing to covenant with me, with these parents, to work together in their spiritual guidance of their children, would you please stand with me? As we pray for the spiritual life of these young babies. I'm now going to ask the elder one by one, if they will take each family, one would be one family, one would be the other. They're going to pray. If you'd bow your heads and pray for this family.
Father, we are just so thankful for these young couples that have committed this, Father. Father, as this world changes and gets so crazy, it's harder and harder as adults to stand and carry the brand of the cross. Father, we have no idea what life will be for these babies when they're 10, 12, 14, 18, 20 years old. <laughs> Father, we pray that you would give these young people strength to encourage, to show the way. Father, the greatest way they can show it is they live it each and every day in their lives. That you have value to mom and dad. With value to mom and dad, you will have value to these children. Father, they will grow with that value. It would be our prayer. And Father, if there's any stumbling, let us as a church stand with them and walk with them. Let us help to guide them. Let us be the rock that they can lean on. The fortress where they can stand. The shelter they can seek in the storm. God, we just lift them up to you and pray your hand upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's a little reminder that they can carry all the days of their life. When they look upon them, Mom, they'll realize what the importance and the specialty of what happened here today. As long as God is important to you, He will be important to your children. When He loses value to you, He will lose value to them. We stand with you and walk with you. If you ever need us, call us. We will never, ever be out of reach. God, God bless you all. If we could get some baby holders, we got baby holders. We need some baby. That's the first time I've ever had to say that for baptism. You notice my hands don't work that way. Justin, Justin and Connie are coming today to be baptized. They're not coming to be saved, for they've already been saved. They've already accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Today, they decided to wear the brand of the cross. Today, they have decided to stand up and publicly profess their love for God and their commitment to His Son, Jesus Christ. Today, Dad's going to get to do something, but very few husbands and daddies ever get to do. Today, Dad's going to get to help baptize his wife. Yeah, unplug that. Freeze them, shock them, any way you can get them in. That's what I always say. All right. Did they go to change clothes? Oh, come on. But they're coming to be baptized. They want to follow in believers' baptism. They're coming to be branded before you with the cross. Their salvation was secured at the moment that they started to believe in Almighty God. When they, when they said that prayer, whether it be in a church or whether it be in their car, whether it be in a bar ditch, when they decided to surrender their life unto the God, that was sealed. Now they want to be <clears throat> following believers' baptism. Both of these guys, when I met with them and talked with them, and Terry and I talked with them, told me, I need to get this done. God is laying this on my heart. This is something I need to make right. Folks, what a great answer. So I want you to think to yourselves now, maybe this is something that you may need to get right. There's a story of, of Philip, and uh, he caught this Ethiopian eunuch, was riding in his, his wagon coming down the trail, and he was reading some scripture in Isaiah. God laid on his heart to go to him, and he jumped up in that wagon. He said, you know what you're reading? Oh, Ethiopian said, I ain't got a stinking clue. He said, let me explain Jesus to you. Let me explain God to you in the scriptures and what's written here in Isaiah. And the Bible says that once it was explained to him that he believed. And when he believed, he says, what about baptism? Old Philip said, there's some water right there. He said, we can get it done right now. The old Ethiopian said, pull this chariot over. It's nothing but water. Folks, it's water. But it symbolizes so much more. We have one victim. Is it warmer? Hey, and I got a confession to make. The heater didn't burn out. 
but I'm not an electrician. So I didn't know when that little yellow light's on, that means that it's not working. So when we plugged it in last night and the little yellow light was on, it wasn't working all night. But it's warmer now. Not much, but it's warmer now. <laughs> you, you might want to wait on your wife to get here so we can do like wham, wham. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I told you about the one we did out in West Texas in a water trough in the middle of January, out in the middle of a pasture. There's a father and a son, you know, and they talk about Peter walking on the water. Peter didn't have nothing on that kid, buddy. <laughs> That boy come out of that tank, because they had the truck running over by the tank, because they knew it was going to be cold, buddy. He went right across the water shooting rooster tails. <laughs> okay, we're going to do you first. When you step out, you can be a part of baptizing her. You just grab her arm, and we'll do the same thing with her. And we got blankets and towels and everything to wrap you all in. Come on in. <laughs> it's clean. You can, you can stand or you can kneel, whichever you want to do. <laughs> you want to kneel and lay back or you just want to lay back just going to lay back okay Justin do you accept God as your father Jesus Christ as your savior and the Holy Spirit as your guide buried in baptism all the way guys raised to walk in newness of life <laughs> if you'll hop right over there come on Connie It's, he said, it's not that bad. <laughs> look, look, at me, look at me real quick. Connie, do you accept God as your father? Jesus Christ is your savior. The Holy Spirit is your guide. Buried in baptism. All the way down, guys. All the way. Hey. As a token of your remembrance for you all, we give out these little Bibles with Bible covers. Don't ask me after the service, how do you get those? Because that's the only way. And you can't be baptized. Your reason can't be because I want a Bible cover. Okay. Or you can serve as an elder. You get one. And they'll even put your initials on it if you serve as an elder. Believe me. Ask these guys. They might just give you the money back for the Bible cover after serving three years as an elder. Folks, I want to thank you all for being a part of this. It was such a great day here at Happy Trails Cowboy Church. I don't know how many people ever get to be a part of so much in one day. But if this won't set your heart on fire for Christmas and this little baby that was born, I don't know what will. Y'all have a great, wonderful Christmas. God bless and adios. <laughs>